You've probably heard by now that we have an opioid problem in this country, even referred to as an opioid epidemic. Probably heard it more times than you can even count. The phrase has become unavoidable in the news and even in politics, especially when it comes to discussions about things like drug policy and fentanyl. So let's examine some historical context, shall we? Opioids. Hmm. While opium is one of the world's oldest drugs, opium is the dried sap or latex that comes from the seed pods or heads of the opium poppy Papaver somniferum. It contains multiple opiates, but primarily morphine and codeine, especially in terms of its use and effects. A quick point of distinction there between the words opiate and opioid, because I've been using them kind of interchangeably and there's some confusion about, about the two words. While both are chemical compounds that exert effects primarily by acting on opioid receptors in the body, opiates are only the substances that are found in the opium poppy plant, uh, whereas opioids are any chemical substance that acts on those receptors. If it seems confusing, just remember that the word opioids is always right. This is also important when it comes to things like drug screening, um, urine drug screens for opiates, but that's a topic for another time. So back to the past. The earliest known use of the opium poppy dates back to more than 5,500 years BC, and there is evidence that it was cultivated intentionally at that time. Ancient Egyptians and ancient Sumerians provide us with the earliest documentation of human opium use for pain, for soothing children, uh, and even describe its use for quote-unquote joy. Opium spread and opium use was widespread in both Eastern and Western cultures. It is important context in any discussion about opioid use to note that even the ancient peoples we're talking about here documented non-medical use of opioids, using it for quote-unquote joy, and every human civilization has looked to substances to alter their consciousness. So humans have used opioids for many millennia, but it wasn't until 1804, a lot more recent history, that morphine was first isolated and purified, and then it was made available for use and for sale. This was a major breakthrough for medical treatments, but also for non-medical use. Now let's fast forward to the American Civil War. The amount of casualties seen and the nature of the injuries was significant. Machinery of war was far more developed than medical care at the time, but there was a very effective medicine that was now available for the treatment of pain associated with injuries, infections, surgeries, etc. And that was morphine. It is estimated by the end of the Civil War that there were approximately more than 400,000 Americans who were addicted to morphine. It's hard to really make sense of what the term addiction means in this context because we don't have all the information to make that diagnosis. Um, but it is true that this many people had taken and were taking morphine. A lot of them were taking it non-medically. And after the war, they brought their experiences and their morphine back home. Not only was morphine a major advancement for treating pain, but people and business interests realized that it had other effects as well. The most important effect to note is that it seemed to make people feel good, and people liked that. There was a big market for this, uh, and business interests quickly realized they could take advantage of these desirable effects from morphine and other opioids. At the time, they were just for sale to anyone, without restriction, no prescription needed. Products were marketed for coughs, for teething children, for crying children, for sleep, for sadness, for aches, pains, and more. Morphine was the opioid that dominated this market. This led to even more Americans using opioids and increasing numbers of unhealthy use and probably addiction. Treatment programs popped up too. There was an increasing push to find a cure for morphine addiction. Heroin was isolated in England in the 1870s and was brought to market by the Bayer Corporation in 1898. It was primarily marketed for cough, while morphine is named after the god Morpheus, the god of sleep, because of its sedating and calming properties, as the story goes, heroin got its name for its heroic ability to get people off of morphine. It was thought to be safer and less addictive, but is it? Fast forward a few years. By 1908, President Teddy Roosevelt had declared an opioid crisis secondary to opium and morphine still. He appointed an opium commissioner to work on the problem, and the blame was laid squarely on industry, pharmaceutical manufacturers and vendors. It's giving deja vu. Sounds eerily similar to what happened about 100 years later, doesn't it? Well, so back to heroin. Heroin is just an acetylated morphine molecule. Its chemical name is diacetylmorphine because it has two acetyl groups. 
And these two acetyl groups are very important. The acetyl groups allow heroin to cross into the brain and nervous tissue much faster than morphine. Once inside, it is metabolized to multiple products, including morphine, directly in the brain. So heroin was working to get people off of morphine, opium, laudanum, and all of these opioids. However, it was because heroin caused even more of a rush and created more desire for heroin and more risk for dependency and addiction. It reminds me of the classic children's story about the old lady who swallowed the fly. While the morphine issue had been solved, people quickly became concerned about heroin, and for good reason. By 1924, the police commissioner of New York City reported that 94% of arrests for people who were using drugs were using heroin. Heroin had been wildly successful at ending other drug use, it seems. And the public perception from these kinds of reports led to heroin being associated with crime, criminal activity, and other negative things, regardless of whether that was really true or not. Heroin replaced the stigmatizing opium dens, morphine dens, uh, all of these other things in popular culture. And there was so much public outcry about this belief that the U.S. Congress completely banned the manufacture, distribution, and import of heroin by the end of 1924. 